Hello viewers, my dear students and all those who will be watching this session on elements of mechanical engineering. Dear viewers, just to tell you, I am going to teach, I am going to take one session on the elements of mechanical engineering over here. I am Dr. Mohammad Khaisar, Professor and Head of the Department for Mechanical Engineering at Maharaja Institute of Technology, Mysore. And this session is going to give you a brief insight on the composition of the subject, what is this subject is all about or rather I would be introducing the branch of mechanical engineering in a quick session now. Now dear viewers, everyone must be knowing that engineering, the word engineering is coined for the sake of civil and mechanical engineering to begin with in the very primitive ages. And therefore, the definition of engineering even today, if you just open up any dictionary, then you will come to know that engineering is defined as it is the branch of science and technology which is used to wherein desi the designing, the development, the manufacturing, the working and the maintenance of various structures, bridges, mechanisms, machines and then maintaining them that is what is going to be carried out in engineering. So what we come to know from this definition is that engineering basically is a composition of two very primitive branches that is civil and mechanical engineering and to tell you these two branches in addition to electrical engineering are called as core branches. Now you would be understanding the importance of the word core branches here. Why? Because core branch means to say these are the branches which will, which were existing right from the existence of this world and which will be remaining till the last day of this world. Without these branches, nothing is going to exist or nothing is going to proceed or progress in this world. Everything is in and around these three branches, mechanical, civil and electrical. And only thing is, okay, due to the supply and demand context, due to the break even processes, what may happen is sometimes uh, here and there little variation might be there in the scope, whereas the application, the use and the importance of these branches is never going to fade away from our lives. This is the importance of these three branches. Now let me come to the actual uh, topic wherein I am trying to give you a preamble or the introduction to the elements of mechanical engineering as a subject. Now considering such a fascinating field, the branch of engineering where everything that comes to your mind, everything that is taught and learned by we people, you can see in terms of reality. Every physical object, every physical mechanism, every physical machine, every physical device, every physical instrument that you see in and around you, be it a chair on which you are sitting, be it the cot on which you would have slept, be it the vehicle which you will be driving or riding, be it the car which you will be driving, be it the bus wherein you will be boarding, be it the train, be it the aerospace industry, be it a pen, be it a pin. So what I mean to say is starting from a small pin to the space shuttle, it is the product, it is the engineering marvel of mechanical engineering branch. And every other branch to me as an individual, if you ask my point of view about the importance of mechanical engineering, all other branches are going to come and play their role only after the mechanical engineering branch would have produced some mechanism, some device, some machine, some vehicle, some something physical which will be required for the society or which will be required for the service of humanity. So that is what is the importance of mechanical engineering my dear friends. Now here considering the importance and considering the uh, requirement to learn and to know about the basics or the foundations of mechanical engineering. As mechanical engineering students are in common, in general, because this session does not benefit only mechanical engineering students, even other people who are keen to know what is there in mechanical engineering, this session could be of great use to even those people also. Now my dear friends, Vishveshwara Technological University has introduced elements of mechanical engineering from the beginning. 
into its curriculum. Now, the students who have to study this subject, they will be studying this subject in the name elements of mechanical engineering. What it means to say by elements of mechanical engineering is that the entire mechanical engineering has been categorized into various sub-specializations, say for example. Just like we do specialized medical engineering, sorry, medical sciences in terms of orthopedic, cardio or many such different specializations. Even in mechanical engineering also, the moment you progress beyond your graduation, you will come across many such specializations, micro specializations, nano specializations. Now considering this, entire mechanical engineering is categorized or composed into elements that is why this is called elements of mechanical engineering wherein you will be knowing the basics of all specializations or categorizations into mechanical engineering. Now this has been uh, offered with the subject code 22 EME 13 or 23. 13 is because you will be if you are studying this subject in the first semester then it will be E 22 EME 13 slash if you are studying it in the second semester it is called EME 23 22 EME 23 22 is the scheme EME stands for elements of mechanical engineering and 1 3 or 2 3 stands for first or second sem and it will be the third subject which you will be studying in addition to other subjects in your curriculum in the first semester. Now for an individual who is a learner a learner then uh, the learning of the complete mechanical engineering within a span of three months or six months or even one year or two years or four years, it is never going to be sufficient because it's a huge ocean considering the applicability, the importance, the scope of mechanical engineering into everybody's life in the society. It is just enormous. Considering this, whatever is the basic requirement to become a learner, to build the aptitude so that you could learn mechanical engineering, this subject will give an, a brief insight on the subject. Now, what is the composition of this subject as per the Vishweshwara Technological University syllabus for the subject 22 EME 13 or 23 is, you will have to study five modules and these five modules are going to educate you people educate its learners, educates the, educate the students with the basics of mechanical engineering and its composition will be in module 1, you will have introduction to mechanical engineering wherein you will be trying to know what is mechanical engineering, what is called mechanical engineering, what is its importance, wherein the start will be from what is the scope of mechanical engineering, what is the role of mechanical engineer in the society, in the industry and all. And then you will then switch over to the technical part of this subject wherein you will be learning the steam formation and its applications. Now steam is something what a common man may or may not be knowing, steam and its applications are so many in this world that if you just look back some even the locomotive some 30 years back or so, you would come across even the locomotive, the steam engines which were driving the trains. From that, even in the pharmaceutical industry, in the food industry, in almost most of the industries, people come across the use and applications of steam. So thereby, we must know the people who want to use the industry which is using steam and its uh, applications, then those industries should have the engineers who would be knowing how to form steam, what are the equipments that will be used to uh, form the steam what quantity, what are the conditions, what are the precautions that have to be taken, what are the mountings, accessories, what are the various components, how much can you produce a steam, how much water supply has to be there, how to maintain the steam uh, equipment like boilers and all. So all those will be known by whom? It will be by the mechanical engineers, mechanical engineers no other people. So thereby it becomes very important for mechanical engineers to know what is steam, how does it form and how pressure is going to uh, play an important role in the steam formation and how is it going to produce energy. That is where steam and its formation will have to be learned and then its application where all this is applied. 
steam when you produce, where all can it be applied? As I told you, in the chemical industry, in the food industry, in the beverage industry, in the pharmaceutical industry, in most of the applications, in one way or the other, at one stage or the other, steam is essential for the industry to produce something or to maintain something. In such an important uh, application, steam becomes very important to be known and studied by a learner. Thereafter, now this is the era wherein everywhere you just come across any of the uh, lectures or any of the experts speaking on the present day scenario in the world, people will speak more or less, at least some part of their addressing will be on the energy. Why? Because, because of the continuous utilization and ever increasing utilization of energy, now the energy, its production, its conservation, everything becomes very, very important. In this era, we are also aware, right from our schooling, we have been taught by our teachers in our colleges and all that. See, the energy that is to be produced by the use of fossil fuels such as natural gas, coal, oil, petroleum and all, it is going to get exhausted. It reserves are going to get exhausted maybe in two decades, three decades or four decades from now. Considering this, people have been working, especially the thinkers across the world, the researchers across the world, the global thinkers have been extensively working on the research and development of alternative sources of energy or renewable sources of energy or what we call non-traditional sources of energy. So that is where this solar energy, nowadays you can see even the government offers subsidy or some 5% or 10% reduction in the electricity bill if you are having a solar uh, panel over your houses for a water heating system or something or the other. So considering this, solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy and many more are there in your syllabus, solar, wind and tidal energy is incorporated, whereas beyond this, wave energy, ocean thermal energy, many other uh, alternate energy sources are there, but according to your syllabus, you will be knowing three of the most important alternative energy sources or renewable energy sources such as solar energy, wind energy and tidal energy sources. So in module 1 overall if I just tell you, you will get to know what is mechanical engineering, what is steam, how is it formed, where are it is going to be used by the people and then you will be also learning what is the, uh, what is alternate energy or what is renewable energy and what are the various renewable energy sources and little detailing about solar, wind and tidal energy sources. This is what is there in module 1. In module 2, let us come across module 2. See, if you have to use some component, if you have to use some part or the component, maybe your pen, maybe a spectacle, maybe uh, your mobile phone, maybe a shaft, maybe, a, there are too many things because every now and then, at every single small instance of time in our life, every day, we will be using some part or the other, some component or the other, some device or the other, some instrument or the other, physical. Now, all these physical components are the sources, maybe pen, maybe even chalk piece you take for example. So, from where does it come? Does it straight away come down from the heavens? Does it straight away get up from the earth and say, just come and sit in my hands for my usage? No, it's never going to happen. It is available in the nature in the form of raw material. Now, one has to transform this raw material into finished usable product. Who does this? It is nothing, it is none other than the mechanical engineer. Now, considering this, to transform a raw material which is available in nature into the finished product, you will have to carry out the manufacturing and with the help of some of the manufacturing processes. So that is where module 2 comes into picture. In order to manufacture something, there are several ways in which manufacturing can be done. One can be forming wherein you will be, you will neither be removing the material, you will not even be adding the material, you will just be heating the material and you will be converting its geometry, more or less such as casting, you will be melting the material, you will be pouring it into a cavity, the shape of the cavity will be resembling the shape of the product that you want and then you will just allow it to solidify, it will give you the product that you want. 
or wire drawing wherein from a die you will be pulling out the material. So that is what is called drawing. You are drawing out of the die. Alright. So that is how you will get wires, cables and all. Likewise, without having to remove the material from the given raw material or without having to add some material to the given raw material you will be producing or you will be manufacturing or you will be transforming a raw material into a finished product without adding or removing the material from it. So that kind of a process is called forming process wherein you are just going to change the shape. You are, there will be no change in the volume, the change will be only in the geometry or the shape of the raw material. Now next way in which you will be able to transform a raw material into finished product is material removal process. You will be removing the material from the given raw material to get the product. More or less like carpentry, the basic wood turning, the basic manufacturing or lathe you might have seen wherein the tool will be used to remove the material from the periphery of the raw material given to you and then at the end what you will find is the final product, useful product. What are you doing there? Are you adding any material there? No. Are you retaining the same volume? No. You are removing the material. So the production of a component, the manufacturing of the component, the transformation of a raw material into the finished product is happening with the removal of material, removal of extra material from the raw material. That is why it is called material removal process. That can be manual, that can be machine material removal also. Manual means with the help of handheld tools, you will be using a hacksaw blade, right? If you want to uh, get some product, at, even at your houses, if you want the finished product of some size and shape, what you will do? You will cut with the hacksaw or with the knife or something. What are you doing there? You are removing the additional material or extra material to get the finished product. So that is handheld manual material removal process. And if you are using a machine like lathe, drilling machine, milling machine, grinding machine, shaping machine, planing machine, milling machine, as such, if you use machines for the removal of the material to get the finished product, that is called machine material removal process. So manual or machine. But the thing is, here in such type of manufacturing process, wherein material is removed to get the finished product to transform the raw material into the finished product it is called material removal process so first one was farming process wherein you did neither added the material nor you removed the material you just change the shape or geometry that is called farming or constant volume process here volume reduction process in material removal process wherein you are going to remove the material from the given raw material to get the finished product. So that is why material removal process. The another uh, way of producing something or manufacturing is material addition process wherein you will be making your use of the processes like welding, brazing, uh, fastening wherein you will be making use of the bolts, nuts, screws or rivets and all or you will also be making use of glue, adhesives and all to join one component with the other to make the finished product. Such processes are called material addition processes or fabrication processes. So there are three ways in which you can manufacture. One just by changing the geometry, second by removing the additional material, third by adding one to the other that all the three ways are possible to manufacture a product. Now in order to produce a component or manufacture a product using material removal process, that is what is there in your module 2, wherein lathe, drilling machine, milling machine and its operations are to be studied. You will be coming to know what is a lathe and then how does the lathe function and what are the various operations that can be carried out on lathe, like maybe turning thread cutting operation or step turning operation, taper turning operation, facing operation. As such, you will be learning some of the operations that can be performed on it. Similarly, when you come, when you try to learn what is a drilling machine, you will come to know what is a drilling machine. With the drilling machine, you are able to make a hole into a component or modify an already existing hole. Both the ways it is possible. So using the drilling machine, what all various operations can you perform? You can perform making a hole into it, that is what is called drilling. You can go for reaming, wherein you can clean the already existing hole. You can go for boring, 
wherein you will be enlarging the existing hole. You can go for counter boring wherein you can enlarge the existing hole to some distance, not to the entire depth. You can make counter sinking operation wherein you can give a sink into the already existing hole. You can clean the welded surface with the help of counter, sorry, spot facing operation. All these operations can be performed with the help of drilling machine. And you might also have seen, there are several types of drilling machines available such as bench drilling machine, hand drilling machine, radial drilling machine. As such, several types of drilling machines are also available. So, as well, milling machine. You would have seen gears, right? Gears, how they appear. So, gears are very normally manufactured using a special purpose machine which is known as milling machine. You can manufacturing, you can manufacture gear, you can make grooves, you can make angular cutting in the metal components, all that is possible with the help of milling machine. So, in module 2 overall what you will be studying is, you will be learning something about machine tool operation. Machine means something which will reduce the human effort for carrying out the operation or manufacturing operation. So that is what is a machine. So machine tool operations among that you will be learning about lathe and its operations, drilling machine and its operations, milling machine and its operations. In addition to that, the newer technologies what are available uh, to you people introduction to the advanced manufacturing systems. Now in, in addition to the primitive or the traditional uh, machines, now it is the era wherein Accuracy of the levels of nano, you need accuracies in the components, in the, uh, the products that you get to the level wherein 10 raise to minus 9, minus 8, point zero 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 one. So if something like, if you are giving order to me to produce a shaft which is only about 50 millimeters diameter, then obviously exact 50 millimeters is never going to be possible for a human being or uh, to make a machine which can produce exactly 50 millimeters diameter shaft. And even if I produce, nobody has the instrument to measure exactly 50 millimeters because even the instrument is produced by or manufactured by some human being. Considering this, there will be some tolerance, acceptable limits. So what acceptable limits are running now? Earlier they used to be 50 if it is given, then 50 plus or minus 0.1 or 0 0.01. That means the acceptable values in the shaft sizes were 49.99 to 50.01. Now the accuracy because of the progress and development of automation technology has gone up to a level wherein it is capable of producing a shaft. If I am asking 50 millimeters diameter, then 49.999999 to 50.0000001. That means it is so very accurate that the accuracy up to the level of 0.8 times 01, up to this level the accuracy is possible. How is it happening? How is it becoming possible? It is because of the advanced manufacturing systems wherein the manual operations have been transformed into automated ones because of which such level of accuracies have become possible and such advanced manufacturing systems are called CNC manufacturing systems like CNC lathe, CNC milling machine, CNC drilling machine, CNC shaping machine. All of them that is computer numerical control, CNC stands for computer numerical control. So because of those CNC machines, it has become possible to automate the which otherwise were to be produced by manual operations. Now they have been automated because of which this level of accuracy is possible up to the level of 0 0.00001. This is what you are going to study in module 2. You are going to study about machine tool operations and the advanced manufacturing systems to some extent. Module 3 <coughs> is about IC engines. IC stands for internal combustion engines, wherein combustion of fuel is possible internal to the engine. That is what is called internal combustion engine. Engines are used to produce mechanical energy with the help of thermal energy, that is what is engine, right? Where does thermal energy comes from? Thermal energy comes from combustion of fuel. And where is combustion of fuel taking place? Inside the engine cylinder. This is what is the 
elaboration of internal combustion engine right so you are going to learn something about the introduction to internal combustion engine because why it is called internal combustion engine specifically is because there are engines wherein combustion takes place external also that is why we are specifically telling here that it is internal combustion engines all two wheelers all four wheelers even generators and all many of them they use internal combustion engines wherein the fuel is burnt fuel could be natural gas or it can be the petroleum fuel all right so here in in, in case of internal combustion engine you will be learning the basic structure of internal combustion engine what are the key elements or components of an internal combustion engine and then you will be learning about the petrol engine diesel engine how does the petrol engine work what are the what is the difference between petrol and diesel engines and what is the difference in working of petrol and diesel engines that is also you are going to learn in addition to that you are also going to learn something about two stroke petrol engines four stroke petrol engines and all if you just recall now nowadays it is very rare that two stroke engines are seen otherwise just if you just look back some 5 10 years back then you would come across most of the two wheelers in particular were uh, manufactured with two stroke engines only like yamaha or hero poch vehicle or many of such vehicle were produced or were with only two stroke petrol engine what it means to say is two stroke means to say one cycle of power production and consumption used to happen in two strokes of piston inside the cylinder this is what it means to say by two stroke one time the piston goes from one end of the cylinder to the other end it will produce the power and the second time it will be consumed this is what is called two stroke two stroke of the piston from one end to the other end coming back right so that will complete one stroke and then in the next stroke uh, it will be consumed the power produced will be consumed that is why it is called a two stroke engine likewise if you come to the four stroke then to complete one complete cycle of power production and consumption it will take four strokes of the piston inside the cylinder or what you call bore right so that is why it has been categorized as two stroke and four stroke if the complete cycle Come, gets uh, takes place within two strokes of the piston from one end to the other end of the cylinder it is called two stroke engine if again it is taking four strokes to complete the entire cycle of power production and consumption it is called four stroke engine so four details you are going to learn in terms of ic engines Pet what is petrol engine what is diesel engine what are the differences and then what is two stroke engine what is four stroke engine all these four details you are going to learn in the module 3 in addition to the internal combustion engines you will also be learning something about refrigeration and air conditioning because uh, from at least past 30 years in a country like India refrigeration and air condition have been extensively used now it is the era wherein no house probably even a small hut by uh, the poor man will also have a refrigerator the minimum equipment at their house bearing to the needs of the society wherein they are required to preserve food and other commodities safely to be used in the days to come so considering this the application and use of refrigeration and air conditioning have become extensive even in our country also so considering this the scope for you people to learn something about what is refrigeration if you just try to know what is refrigeration what is air conditioning and how do they function it is important for a mechanical engineering reason being that again refrigeration and air conditioning they are bread, the bread and butter of no other branch of engineers but mechanical engineers so you people who are aspiring to become mechanical engineers you will be capable of designing refrigerators servicing refrigerators bringing innovations in refrigerators not just in that even in air conditioners also it is no other person but a mechanical engineer who does bring out new changes modifications power saving everything across the manufacturing design and manufacturing of refrigeration and air conditioning so what i am trying to tell you is while briefing you about this module i am also trying to put some light on the scope of a mechanical engineer so refrigeration you will be knowing what is refrigeration 
and then you will be coming across the various types of refrigerations wherein vapor absorption and vapor compression refrigeration there are two types whenever it is a demonstrate if, if it is a domestic refrigerator then it is a vapor compression refrigeration system wherein you will find a small compressor there and if the food storage industry if you come across such uh, uh, applications then it is vapor absorption refrigeration what is required there then you will also be trying to know what are the various types of refrigerants that are used and what are the desirable properties of those refrigerants required there and then you will also be trying to know air conditioning system where you are trying to maintain the temperature of a particular space thermally insulated space what we can call at a temperature lesser than the atmospheric temperature that is what is called air conditioning controlling even the humidity factor within the room so that the people inside the room will be in the luxurious setup or luxurious ambience so that is what you are going to learn so overall in module 3 you are going to learn something about what is an engine what is an internal combustion engine what are what are the various types of internal combustion engines what is refrigeration and what is air condition air conditioning and its types and classifications and what are the various properties does the refrigerant that is to be used here in refrigeration and air conditioning has to have all these things you are going to learn in module 3 now coming to module 4 power is something which is inevitable for humans if you just imagine power even if i am lifting this hand i need power even if i am talking to you i need power and power will be somewhere i have to bring it to the point of application i have to transport power to the point of application from the place where it is available be it mechanical energy, be it electrical power, be it uh, any kind of power, it has to be transported from one place of existence to the place of application. Likewise, even mechanical power, it is something like mechanical power means to say what? It is a reciprocation that is to and fro motion or linear movement or displacement and rotation rotation means rotation of shaft, rotation of wheels. It is, um, it is very easy here, you drive two wheeler, right? When you drive a two-wheeler, power is generated in the engine. From there, it is to be transported to the wheel so that wheels can rotate and you can move further. If that power is not transported from engine to the wheel shaft, how will the vehicle move? You just imagine. Not just that, even the fan that gives you little comfort in the room, especially during the hot times, what will happen? When you switch it on, then mechanical energy is produced in the motor. Then this motor will rotate the hub that is mounted on it and then on the hub you will have mounted the blades. Blades will sweep the air and you are going to feel little comfort here inside the room. So what it means to say is wherever power is generated from that place to the power of a point of application power has to be transported. And if it is mechanical energy, the rotation or reciprocation has to be transported. How are you going to do it? Again, mechanical engineering comes into picture. How? Power transmission and joining processes. This module will teach you how <coughs> power is transmitted. Mechanical power reciprocation or rotation is transported from the place of generation to the place of application how it is going to be transported how are you going to transport see if you just take the ex simplest example of a bicycle you will pedal the bicycle when you pedal the bicycle do you pedal it on the wheels straight away you don't do it right you will be doing it on the hub in the gear case more or less in the middle of the frame of the bicycle there what you will have you will pedals pedals will be mounted onto the gear case right gear bigger gear and on that gear there will be a chain what does the chain do the mechanical power in terms of rotation that you are generating with your pedaling that rotation is transported from that gear onto the back wheel so therefore what will happen the chain is going to transport power of rotation of the gear from the generation place to the back wheel on which a free wheel will have been mounted on that when the chain moves, 
the chain will transport that mechanical rotation onto the free wheel. Free wheel will transport it to the hub and in turn the wheel will rotate. So when you pedal, actually you are generating rotation at the application or the pedaling place. That power is being transported to the back wheel or rear wheel of the bicycle. So because of it, the rear wheel will move and the bicycle will start moving. So this is how transportation or transmission takes place from the generation point to the application point. Likewise gears, likewise the rope, likewise the uh, chain drive or belt drives. If you, if you have ever gone to the floor mills to make what the atta be it of ragi, be it of wheat, be it of uh, uh, rice or so. If you just observe, they will have a very long belts and then when they switch on, the belt will be mounted on to the motor on one side and on the other side it will be mounted on to the floor mill. So what is happening when actually the power, the rotation is being generated by the motor and from there, from that point till the floor mill, the power is being transmitted by the belt. So what it means to say is mechanical power also has to be transmitted or transported from the generation point to the application point. And for doing that, there are several methods of doing it. You can use a belt, you can use a chain. If the power transmission has to be more accurate and if the generation and application points are very close, then you can go for gears. You can even transport power with the help of the rope also. So all those things you are going to learn in the module 4 wherein mechanical power transmission uh, will be studied by all of us while learning this subject. Along with that, you are also going to learn joining processes. See, just like I have told you in the uh, module 2, machine tool operations, one of the ways of producing some uh, commodity or the part or the component is by joining several different components into one. So thereby joining processes or fabrication processes are also a very important part of manufacturing in mechanical engineering. So what are the various ways in which we can join? We can join with the help of a glue, we can join with the help of adhesives, we can join with the help of rivets, we can join two components with the help of uh, what you can say uh, the fasteners, bolts, nuts and screws, we can join with the help of soldering, we can join with the help of brazing, with the, we can join with the help of arc welding as you would have seen. So welding processes are also one of the most commonly used joining methods for joining two different components to form one single product. So all those you are going to learn here in module 4, joining processes also. Along with that in module 5, you will be taking an insight into future and mobility technology just like robotics, mechatronics and other uh, techniques wherein the automation comes into picture. When you switch over to module 5, what you will be trying to know is, uh, you will be trying to take an insight into the future mobility means to say that you will be sitting somewhere and you will be controlling the functionality of some machine or some mechanism by sitting here with the help of remote control. Now it is already there, right? Why? Because even a farmer, the uh, water release into his farmland, he can control it, he can control the on and off functionality of the pump with the help of his mobile phone application sitting here inside his house. That is the era now. So what it means to say is automation plus remote control, that is what is the insight to the future mobility. Right. And you will be also uh, getting exposed to the introduction to the mechatronics and uh, robotics here while studying module 5 wherein the manual control more or less manual operations are more or less getting converted into the automation or automatic control or automatic operations because of which <coughs> mechatronics and robotics are becoming more and more popular because faster they will do, they do not get exhausted like humans and then the accuracy with which they will be performing, this is immense. Co considering this mechatronics and robotics, again they are a part of mechanical, who will produce mechatronics products, who will produce robots, 
it is again mechanical engineers. So this is how all these five modules which are there in your uh, elements of mechanical engineering as the subject 22 EME 13 bar 23 you will be knowing a brief insight about what is mechanical engineering, what are the various categories into the mechanical engineering can be uh, composed such as uh, steam formation, energy, uh, machine tool operations, then IC engines, refrigeration, air conditioning, mechanical power transmission, then the few insight to the future mobility technology and introduction to the mechatronics and robotics. All these you are going to learn in the subject elements of mechanical engineering. Now, after teaching and learning of this subject is over during the first semester, what will be the capability that will be enhanced into a student? What a student will be capable of? What are the outcomes? Why you should study? Why a learner should learn this subject? That is given by the course outcomes over here. The learner after completing this subject, this course of elements of mechanical engineering, a learner will be, will have acquired the knowledge on energy sources, various joining processes, working of machine tools, CNC, refrigeration and air conditioning systems and mechatronics. All these you will be knowing the brief introduction to all of them. Then the second outcome from this subject for the learner will be, the learner will be able to interpret the principles of working and operations performed on late drilling and milling machine tools. What operation if you are given some problem, if you are asked to make a hole, then you will have learned that I cannot make a hole, it is not wise to make a hole using a lathe or milling machine. You will have learned that if I have to make a hole or modify an already existing hole, I will have to make use of drilling machine, not lathe or not milling machine. This interpretation is possible for the learner. Then third outcome could be the learner will be able to analyze the formation of steam and thermodynamic properties of steam because it is not just uh, the uh, vessel containing water is kept on a gas stove and you have just heated it up. No. When it comes to the application and uh, the formation of steam in the industrial application, it will be very huge and it will be very dangerous also. Why? Because the moment the water gets heated, then the water is going to get converted into vapor and the vessel in which you will have composed water totally, that will be completely at a very, very high pressure once the steam is formed. Then controlling the pressure, if you have observed a pressure cooker, why that safety valve will be there? Why that visual will be there? It is because as soon as the water gets heated and it gets evaporated within the pressure cooker, the steam is formed. Steam will require more space whereas it will be restricted within the boundaries of the pressure cooker. That is what will happen. The visual will go up, the additional stream will be released, the pressure will come down and again it will be safe. And if anything is wrong, then the safety valve will eject and the steam will have gone out forcibly. That is how the human beings are saved out of the accidents. So, if a small pressure cooker of just 2 liters, 4 liters capacity is so hazardous and very dangerous, then you just can imagine big, big boilers wherein thousands of liters of uh, steam has to be produced, how dangerous they could be. They are no less than a bomb. So, for, because of that, the outcome from this subject could be, you will be able to analyze the formation of steam and then you will also be knowing the thermodynamic properties of steam. Then the fourth outcome from this subject for the learner will be, the learner will be able to differentiate the pros and cons of energy sources, IC engine, machine tools, power transmission systems and all. So, the learner will be able to know the pros and cons of energy sources that means you have you will be knowing tidal energy wind energy solar energy you will have used primitive energy sources then what are the um, benefits and what are the limitations or what are the risks on the part of the uh, society all those things you will be knowing and then you will also be trying you will also have learned what is internal combustion how does two stroke in it? because for a common man see for a common man only the use is more important 
Why? Because he is not responsible for its production or modification. The common man will only be using the end product, whereas who is going to design and produce the product? It is mechanical engineer. If an automobile, if a two-wheeler or a four-wheeler has to be used by some common man, it is to be produced by somebody and it is nothing but it is none other than a mechanical engineer in the industry. So that is why when mechanical engineers are responsible for design, production, maintenance and servicing of the automobiles, then obviously it is very important for them to know what are, the, what are these engines, how do they work. So all this, an introduction to this will be known to you in this subject that is internal combustion engine. Then machine tools, power transmission systems, an introduction to that also you will be learning. Then the fifth outcome that the learner is going to get from this subject will be he or she will be able to evaluate the performance parameters of IC engines. That means what gives more mileage, what gives more power uh, generation from the IC engines, you will be able to know. Length and tension in the belt drive because if a belt is used for transmission of power from one place to the other, you just, I gave the example of a floor mill, right? So from the motor to the uh, floor mill, if the length of the belt is too much, then what will happen? Sagging will be there, it will not at all rotate the mill. It will slip easily because of the looseness. And if it is too tight, again it will resist itself and it will not rotate. So that is why length and tension in the belt drive has to be very optimum, that is calculatable. So that is what you are going to become capable of. You will be able to calculate what should be the length and tension in the belt drive for power transmission. Likewise, velocity ratio and in gear drives. In gear drives also velocity ratios will become very important. So all these outcomes will be a part of learning process. If you learn positively, if you learn from the subject information point of view, not just from passing point of view, obviously all these outcomes are going to be yours. Now, considering your qualification, you will have to uh, write tests and examination. Let me say how the evaluation or assessment system will be there as per the Vishweshwara Technological University regulations. CIE, Continuous Internal Evaluation, CIE means to say. So, that will be valid for 50 marks. So that means to say you will be writing assignments, you will be taking up quizzes, you will be writing the tests also. All that will be evaluated for 50 marks and then exam will be for 100 marks, exam conduction will be 100 marks. So that means a student will be writing the examination for 100 marks, right? And after writing the examination for 100 marks, it will be evaluated, then it will be reduced to again 50 marks. The university will reduce for 100 if you have scored say 80, for 50 it will be calculated as 40. So this 40, so out of 40 marks it will be calculated and then CAE plus SWE semester end examination, 50 plus 50 as such the calculation will be taken and it will make up to 100 marks that will appear into your marks cards. This is how the examination pattern has been designed by Vishweshwara Technological University. Thank you so much.